Linda, are you there? Linda? Hi, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Linda Mataji. Yes. Hello. Hare Krishna. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I received, your, I received your multiple um, uh, envelopes and I wanted to talk to you about them, but some other time. Okay. I will call you soon. Okay. So, Janva Mataji and Ruchi Mataji are already on the call. So, let's get started uh, with the prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhutam Thapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Tadati Svapadantikam Vancha Kalpata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Pyaevacha Patita Nam Pavini Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadhi Aura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottama Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Vira Nashta Paye Shuva Shuva Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Vinayasthiki Manasikanga Mataji, I think I hear you. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Rishali Mataji. 
So we are reading from Canto Two, Chapter Ten, Text Forty Two. Okay. Canto Two, Chapter Ten, Text Forty Two. Okay, I'll read the Sanskrit and the translation, and maybe one of you can read the purport. The Evedam Jagatthata Bhagavan Dharma Rupa Drik Ushnati Sthapayan Vishwam Tiryan Nara Suradi Bi Translation He, the personality of Godhead, as the maintainer of all in the universe, appears in different incarnations after establishing the creation. and thus he reclaims all kinds of conditioned souls amongst the humans the non humans and the demigods uh linda mathi ji do you have the book would you like to read the purport sure sure can you hear me yeah if you can just keep your phone um closer to you i think it might help okay The Supreme I can still hear you. We can still hear you, yeah. Okay. Okay. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, incar- incarnates himself in different societies of living entities to reclaim them from the clutches of illusion, and such activities of the Lord are not limited only to human society. He incarnates himself even as a fish, a hog, a tree, and many other forms. But less intelligent persons who have no knowledge of him deride him, even if he is a hum- in human society as a human being. The Lord therefore says in the Bhagavad Gita, "Hmm, okay, <laughs> okay. Here, here's the Sanskrit. Um, Avatmati mamudha." Matsum tatam asram param bhavam ajaram tam mama bhuta maha saram. As we have already discussed in the previous verses, it is concluded. that the lord is never a product of his material creation his transcendental position is always unchanged he is the eternal form of knowledge and bliss and he executes his almighty will by his different energies as such he is never the subject of reactions for any of his acts he is transcendental to all such concepts of actions and reactions even if he is visible in the material world the exhibition is only of his eternal energy for he is above the good and bad concepts of this material world in the material world the fish or the hog may be considered lower than the man but when the lord appears as a fish or hog he is neither of them in the material con- conception It is his causeless mercy that he appears in every society of species of life, but he is never to be considered one of them. Conceptions of the material world, such as good and bad, lower and upper, important and insignificant, are estimations of the material energy, and the supreme Lord is transcendental to all such conceptions. The word param bhavam or transcendental nature can never be compared to the material conception. We should not forget that the potencies of the Almighty Lord are always the same and do not decrease as the Lord assumes the form of a lower animal. There is no difference between Lord Sri Rama, Lord Sri Krishna, and his incarnations as a fish or a hog. 
He is all pervading, simultaneously localized at any and every place. But the foolish person with a poor fund of knowledge, for want of Param Bhavam of the Lord, cannot understand how the Supreme Lord can take the form of a man or a fish. One compares everyone to one's own standard of knowledge as the frog in the well considers the sea to be like the well. The frog in the well cannot even think of the sea. And when such a frog is informed of the greatness of the sea, it takes the con conception of the sea as being a little greater than the well. As such, one who is foolish about the transcendental science of the Lord will find it difficult to understand how Lord Vishnu can equally manifest himself in every society of living entities. So, um, thank you, Linda Mataji. Thank you for reading. Thank you. Okay, so... Ritu Mataji, are you still there? <laughs> Yes, Mataji. Okay. So here, uh, Prichu Mataji, can you outline one main point in the whole purport that has just been read? Um, that the Lord, the Lord, is unlimitedly can unlimitedly expand himself into every every species of being. He is unlimited. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. This was Linda Mataji who spoke, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Ruchi Mataji, what uh, can you uh, give uh, another important point from the verse from the purport. Mataji, sorry, I, I was upstairs. I did not really pay attention, but I sorry, I did not pay attention what was being read. Okay, Mataji, yeah. so okay. I will keep asking you questions so you can keep paying attention, okay? Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Manasi Ganga Mataji, would you like to uh, pick one important point that you heard from the lecture? I mean, from the purport? Yeah. So, um, it says that he is never subject to the reactions of his own acts. Krishna, Sri Krishna. So, we all have reactions to our acts, so he's not subject to them. Mm hmm. Yes, Mataji. And what is the reason for that? He's transcendental to um, to the conception of actions and reactions. Um, I, I don't. I was driving, and then when you started reading the purport, um, I was walking from the car. Yes, Mataji. That's 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 fine. So that's I didn't fine. catch everything. So yeah. that's what I was something that I caught. Yeah, you're you're right that uh, Krishna is beyond the material rules of karma. Right. It says here, even if he is visible in the material world, the exhibition is only of his eternal energy. For he mm -hmm. is above good and bad concepts of this material world. Yes. So yes, he thank is Go ahead. So he is. He is, you know, all all existing, all expansive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rishali Mantri, would you like to add something from what you have heard in the purport? Um, uh, um, in this, um, uh, one point was like, uh, uh, there is no difference between Lord Rama, Lord Krishna, of Lord's creation. Even if uh, Lord takes um, incarnation on material, uh, material earth, uh, let's say material uh, 
material creations still it is not material for lord it for lord or uh, even lord takes uh, um uh, incarnation of a fish or hog it is same it is no lower right. uh, in any way right it is always eternal hmm yes it is not so like so much of the s of the night mm-hmm. i just get the report who is speaking ruchi yes ruchi mata ji text 42 right yes text 42 yes, so, so so yes that is a very uh, extremely important word because uh, I, i always try to say this in my um, in my understanding that in my limited understanding that god is the everywhere and in everything he is in the caterpillar that manifests into the butterfly he is in a, he is like in everything and everybody uh, and so even the other people who worship god in some other form uh, as like uh, uh, allah or they worship god as uh, uh, christian he he is like not limited to just um, a particular text he is like everywhere in each and every human being in every plant and every animal and he he is um, he he has eyes or uh, that um can see everywhere and he can feel everywhere and he is all pervasive so that is not yes dr mathiji yeah thank you nothing. okay would you like to wait you'd like to share something very specific from the purport uh that uh, his parambhav is very difficult to understand because that arambhav means that he is beyond mm-hmm. all the laws and all the mm-hmm. beyond mm-hmm. all the um, mm-hmm. like man-made man-made mm-hmm. religions mm-hmm. and laws mm. man-made religion and laws he is above all these things he is like transcendental to all of that and he is like beyond beyond all this material uh laws that we have created so he is in this uh supreme uh about although through these laws we to we do try to find him because it is easier for us through the laws to find him <laughs> because we become purer but then uh, ultimately he is beyond all of this okay thank you for sharing thank you all of you for sharing so shanti mata ji is also on the call shanti mata ji would you like to share anything perhaps she is driving or something are you there shanti mata ji i'm here mata ji hari krishna hari krishna did you hear the purport would you like to share anything from the purport that we just read No, I joined late, Mata Ji, so I didn't, you know, remember. Okay, Mata Ji, no problem. Thank, thank you for asking. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Or just a product of material creation. Okay. Oh. So we will we will focus on this one point that Linda Mataji is telling. Okay. Just now, Linda Mataji was reading the purport again, and uh, it said it is concluded that the Lord is never a product of material creation. his transcendental position is always unchanged he yes. is the eternal form of knowledge and bliss and he executes his almighty will by his different energies okay so we'll pause here and we will hear from shila prabhupad what he has to say about the transcendental nature of krishna's form okay and his appearance in this world yes that okay he is but krishna is not mundane yes subject he is, he is not of this world 
and the three modes of nature cannot act on him usually when we say not mundane it means mm-hmm. that that the three modes of material nature which actually govern this material world cannot mm-hmm. act on him okay right. right so here is here is one okay so krishna's position is always transcendental he is not any creation of this material world but because he comes just like a human being and acts also just like a hum- just like human being those who are less intelligent avajana and ti they think of krishna as ordinary human being avajana and ti ma mudha bhagavad gita 9.11 mudha mudha means asses or less intelligent class of men they cannot understand krishna's position so now shila prabhupada is extremely strong in this is um a lecture on bhagavad gita uh 1.13 okay so he is extremely strong he is saying people who are less intelligent cannot understand krishna so he is he is very very strong because krishna uses a similar word in bhagavad gita 9.11 he says he calls them as mudha mudha means extremely less intelligent people so continuing in the same uh, lecture so if we can understand simply these facts that krishna is transcendental krishna's name is transcendental krishna's form is transcendental satchit ananda vigraha ishwara parama krishna satchit ananda vigraha krishna's body is satchit ananda not body like this this body is asat achit and nirananda mm-hmm. just the opposite this material body is asat asat means temporary so he is talking about our body and he is talking about krishna's body propat is talking about making a comparison he is saying our bodies are temporary they give us misery and they are not at all but krishna's transcendental form is satchit ananda vigraha means it is full of knowledge bliss and it is always eternal okay should i continue reading ready but it will not is but krishna's body is not like that krishna's body is eternal it is chit such chit full of knowledge so less intelligent class of men they cannot understand krishna therefore shastra says ata shri krishna namadi na bhavet grahyam indriyai these indriya these material senses cannot speculate to understand the supreme personality of godhead that is not possible okay this is taken from a lecture on bhagavad gita 1.13 yeah given by prabhupad in london i can send you these quotes if you are interested after the class okay, okay. and this is another lecture where prabhupad is explaining about krishna and his appearance and disappearance and his body on the other hand krishna says in bhagavad gita that janma karma me divyam yo janati tatvatah my janma krishna never says janma mrityu janma karma if somebody says that krishna took birth and he died also that is a mistake that is the conclusion of less intelligent class of men this is not a fact krishna never dies why krishna we are also part and parcel of krishna we also never die so how we also never die laws of karma laws of cause and effect i'm sorry linda mathi ji i couldn't hear you the laws of cause and effect karma no because 
I I'm sorry Linda Mathi I couldn't hear you again what did you say oh the the law of cause and effect you know karma reincarnation such okay yeah. so That's so here proper this thing we also part and parcel of krishna we also yeah. never die so what is that never die part of the thing the whole the soul never die because it take another body again hmm but the soul is eternal and so the soul or our con- inner consciousness or uh, our soul it will keep taking body according to the various karmas <clears throat> but yes ruchi mata ji linda mata ji were you also trying to say the same thing yes yes okay yeah the soul never dies so he's he's talking about the soul that means the soul will never die right. okay i'll continue reading okay from what proper is saying okay that takes place the change of body but krishna has no material body therefore even death the death of the body that is also not in krishna his body is satchit ananda vigraha his body is completely spiritual eternal sat chit full of bliss ananda bliss and chit means knowledge krishna's body is full of knowledge eternal and full of bliss our body is just the opposite material body therefore krishna's body cannot be compared with our body if we do so then we are rascals so rascal is another word for mudha okay mm-hmm. so in all the quotes this, mm-hmm. this theme is repeating what the theme is that whoever wants to think of god in terms of their experience is a less intelligent person okay and he again quotes the same words he says this is explained in bhagavad gita avajananti ma mudha manushyam tanmashritam because i appeared just like a human being manushyam then then fools mudha the this exact word is used mudha means rasko fool so prabhupada is actually quoting krishna because krishna says mudha mudha means a fool Mm-hmm. so he is saying if we try to use our own intelligence to understand krishna it's not possible to understand him okay okay then there is this another verse okay this is from chaitanya charitamrita lecture in new york but krishna's appearance and disappearance is not like that because he is not different from his body we are all in our conditioned stage we are different from our body but krishna and krishna's body is the same thing this is to be understood satchit ananda vigraha ishwara parama krishna satchit ananda vigraha his form is eternal blissful and full of knowledge this material body is not like that so again there is a comparison between our material bodies and krishna's material body then there is another quote that ajyo tat ajyo api and avyatma avyatma it does krishna's body mind there is no difference absolute what is krishna's body that is krishna what is krishna's mind that is krishna's soul or what is krishna's soul that is krishna's body that is krishna avyayam ajo api asan avyayam bhutanam so basically he is saying every part of krishna is uh, absolute absolute means transcendental so again there is another code okay now this is from a practical experience of how krishna deals with the devotee it appears that bhishma dev is repenting the action he committed against the person of the lord so ruchi mata ji what did bhishma dev do why is he repenting 
Okay, let me read a little further, okay? Mm-hmm. You can understand the point. But actually, the lost body was not at all pained due to his transcendental existence. His body is not matter. But he himself and his body are complete spiritual identity. Spirit is never pierced, burnt, dried, moistened, etc. This is vividly explained in the Bhagavad Gita. So it is stated in the Skanda Purana. It is said uh-huh. that the spirit is always uncontaminated and indestructible. It cannot be distressed, nor can it be dried up. When Lord Vishnu in his incarnation appears before us, he seems to be like one of the conditioned souls materially engaged just to bewilder the asuras or the non-believers who are always alert to kill the Lord even from the very beginning of his appearance. Kamsa wanted to kill Krishna and Ravana wanted to kill Ram because foolishly they were unaware of the fact that the Lord is never killed for the spirit is never annihilated. Therefore, Bhishma Dev's piercing of the body of Lord Krishna is a sort of bewildering problem for the non-devotee atheists. But those who are devotees or liberated souls are not bewildered. So now can you guess? Why is... Yes, because he, because he raised up his arms uh, and tried to kill Krishna when, when he forced him to take up the arms when he was trying to Defend Arjun, is that it? Or yes, Mataji. Good. Ruchi Mataji, yeah. So in the battlefield, because um, Bhishma Dev and Krishna were in a chivalrous mm-hmm. spirit, Bhishma Dev was actually firing arrows at Krishna. And um, so Bhishma Dev was piercing the body of Krishna. But here, Prabhupada is giving the explanation that Krishna his body will never be pierced because his body is completely spiritual even when he descends into the material world. Okay? So now, Ruchi Mataji had asked a question, okay? Now let me see if I can find that. Okay? This is from a morning walk conversation. It doesn't elaborate on it, but this is very similar to one of the pastimes that we hear, okay? So now this is a devotee talking to Prabhupada. But Krishna's disappearance about having a Maya body that he left, a Maya body, is that anything to do with Mayavadi? So remember your question, Ruchi Mataji, few weeks, a few days ago? You were saying that when Krishna appears, and he leaves this planet, he leaves a body behind. Right? Yeah. Right? So, mm-hmm. Prabhupada, Prabhupada is giving, the, a devotee is asking a question. So, Krishna's disappearance, he's leaving a Maya body behind. And he appears. Mm-hmm. So, Prabhupada is saying, yes, Maya Vadis means those who are in Maya. Those who are mm-hmm. thinking of Krishna as one of the human beings, for them to delude them, he left the body. But actually, he departed in his own body. Mm. Okay. So there is a similar pastime uh, of Ravana kidnapping Mother Sita. Okay. So Mother Sita is the internal energy of the Lord. So she cannot be captured by anybody who is material. But Ravana kidnapped Sita. Right. So how is this possible? It's actually not possible because it was explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited a Brahman, he was excessively lamenting. He was he was meditating on the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra and he was lamenting and crying and he was saying, like, you know, I gather the army. You know, Ravana has come to kidnap Sita, gather the army. And uh, he was crying because uh, he felt as if Sita was taken away by Ravan in his transcendental meditation. So then he was not eating because he felt as if Sita was taken away by Ravana. So 
in order to pacify his transcendental emotions chaitanya mahaprabhu said no actually sita can never be touched by ravana because she is the transcendental internal potency of lord ramachandra mm-hmm. so what what he the explanation he gives is that when ravana came to came to kidnap sita she was taken away by agni and agni put a maya sita in in the place of real sita because ravan can never touch sita who is the internal energy of the lord so that was the explanation he gave so in order to understand the transcendental appearance and disappearance of the lord we have to hear from pure devotees otherwise if we relate krishna's appearance and disappearance to our own understanding of how we see things in this material world we will be perplexed and what is the analogy that propat gives towards the end of the purport how will we become perplexed the well with the frog yes ma'am he thinks it to be the ocean mhm mhm so if we compare the transcendental activities of krishna with our own experiences they will be like the frog trying to compare the well with an ocean so this is what propad is trying to say and he's trying to say it again and again now i'm going to read from a lecture on bhagavad gita 4.6 where propad elaborates on this point again and again okay so he is saying that, that this is the translation to the verse and here krishna is speaking to arjun in bhagavad gita although i am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although i am the lord of all sentient beings i still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form so what is krishna trying to say in this Um, could you repeat what, it one more time yes although i am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although i am the lord of all sentient beings i still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form hmm. i am the authority of all hmm. yes Hmm. So Linda Mataji, you are saying Krishna is the authority of all. Yeah. He, yes. He is the authority of uh, of every living thing. Nobody has dominion over over you know what he 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 says in his yes, authority. Yes. Yes. Manasi Ganga Mataji, you were trying to say something. So oh, not really but I can I was I can say something I think that um the lord is the lord of all sensual sense sense what did you what did you say sentient being um uh, he's the lord of mm-hmm. of everybody with senses you know material senses yet he will appear a uh, millennium after millennium in his own transcendental form um meaning that he will appear um in his satchitananda vyag vigraha where as he's unlike um those who are under his dominion he's unlike them in that his body is spiritual yes mataji okay. yeah thank you hmm. okay and krishna is saying my transcendental body never deteriorates okay and i appear millennium after millennium every millennium in my original transcendental form so he is speaking about himself and propad will explain this as we go along krishna is the original supreme personality of godhead and out of his causeless mercy he descends into each universe including our earth planet 
in his original form as Krishna. Okay. And when he descends, he does not take on a material body, as Manasi Ganga Mataji explained. He comes in his transcendental body. Okay. And Prabhupada will explain, so I'll read a little bit and then we can discuss more. Prabhupada is speaking here. So Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, explaining the method of his appearance and disappearance. People do not know it. Just like the sun, because we do not see, see at night, formerly some people used to think the sun is now dead or gone. But later on, by scientific method, they have come to know that the sun is always in the sky. Due to our different position, we do not see the sun at night. Otherwise, sun is there. This is, if this is possible for an ordinary material thing, how much is it greatly possible for the Supreme Spirit? So what is the comparison that is being discussed here? Between the sun and the same spirit. Yes, Ruchi Mataji, can you say one or two more sentences and explain this analogy to us a little bit more? Just like earlier, we think that up in the night, the sun has disappeared because we cannot see it. So similarly, if we cannot see God uh, with our eyes, we feel he is not there. But uh, just like later through scientific explanation it was that we have just moved to a different hemisphere but the sun is all, uh, all always there it is it is never absent it is we who have um, like moved away from the sun by the earth's rotation so similarly it is we who cannot see the see god but he is always present yes very nice Ruchimantaji. thank you hmm. Okay, I'm continuing to read, okay, Prabhupada's purport. Therefore, Ajo Api San, Krishna has no birth, no death. We also have no birth and death because we are parts and parcels of Krishna. We have no birth and death. This is explained already in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Na jayate, na mriyate, va kadachit, na hanyate, hanyamare, sharire. So if the part and parcel small atomic particle, we are atomic particle, our magnitude is described in the Shastra. Padma Purana and Ushopanishad also. Kshesagra Shatabhagasya. The top portion of the hair, if you divide it into 100 parts, and again that 100 part, if you divide again 100 part, that is the magnitude of the spirit soul. So whoever has not spoken so far, what is this 100th part that Prabhupada is talking about here? Rishali Mantaji, what is Prabhupada talking about? Um, about soul, magnitude of soul. Yes. How big is that. the spirit soul? It's, us. He's yeah. talking about us. Yeah. 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 Yes. The magnitude of the spirit soul is if you take the tip of hair and then divide it by 100 and then mm -hmm. after dividing it by 100, mm -hmm. you divide it by another 100. Yes, Linda mm -hmm. Mataji. Yes, I, I'm sorry, I was disagreeing with you. I, that, that was my thought. It was the, the minute mark of molecule of Krishna's hair, as I said, are unlimited. And can expand to, you know, the many universes that are in his abode. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm having a little trouble. You know, trouble. You know, um, uh, articulating everything. Yeah. I mean, that's to, a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can we can go a little slower if you like. Maybe it's too fast. No, it's okay. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll end with this, and then uh, we'll try to wrap it up by six o'clock because today there is a lecture from six thirty onwards at the temple. But this is the last thing I'll read, and then uh, we can open up for discussion. Okay. Now, Prabha, this this is going forward into the same. Um, lecture propad is describing our body deteriorates changes just like we are born a small small child baby it grows it stays for some time then it makes some by products from this body we get some children by products then we deteriorate in old age and this body is finished this is called sad vikara six kinds of changes of material body but krishna hasn't caused the changes krishna's body is avyaya his mind is avyaya this means as we have got difference between our soul and the body krishna hasn't caused that avyaya atma his mind his body and his atma his soul the same thing or adi he is a supreme soul whole there is no difference between his body his mind and soul this is to be understood avyayatma those who cannot understand they make difference between his atma krishna's atma and krishna's body they think the mayavadi philosophers they say that krishna he is god or godly they have got the imitations but his body is ma- made of matter no that is not if his body had been made of matter then how could he remember millions of years ago what he did we cannot remember even what we did yesterday night or just this morning we forget the body is changing the blood corpuscles are changing that is scientific but krishna hasn't got that therefore he is explaining himself we can understand krishna by krishna's explanation we should not make any rascal interpretation then we will not be able to understand krishna because our senses are imperfect okay so i'll stop with this and see if someone wants to say anything more actually the version talks about krishna descending in different um species but i think the same thing will apply to all of his incarnations as a fish as a boar he is still completely transcendental that means the modes of nature cannot touch him at all Krishna is transcendental and uh, Srila Prabhupada brought up that one of the distinctions between um, the body of a Jiva and the body of Krishna is that the body of Jiva goes through the six symptoms and I'm just thinking that uh, in his Leela he starts out as a baby so he is making transformation in his body it appears different from the time he appeared on the earth you know in the arms of devaki uh, um to the time that he decided to return um i think he was 125 years old although he appeared to be like 16 um there so there is a trend, there is a difference in at least the shape of his form um and then i'm thinking that he also you know one of the symptoms is that making byproducts and i thought krishna did have children um so like how would you explain that okay thank you very much uh kumarasi ganga mata ji that's a good point so the the dif- the difference is it's it's not that like um 
if something exists in the material world and krishna is not part of the material world um those symptoms do not exist in the spiritual world right i'm not talking so, about well i'm talking about in like when he comes down to um to the earthly planet Okay, that was the whole discussion, right? Even when he comes down to the earthly planet, still he's untouched by material nature, right? Mm-hmm. But those symptoms are showing. Yeah, those symptoms are showing, but he's completely he's those symptoms are not like our symptoms. If we just mm-hmm. understand that, I think that gives us a good foothold. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here. uh propas is again making the same point if we read the remaining part of the purport he's saying it appears as if he is growing like us but all that is happening as part of his internal energy not the external energy mm okay so even in the spiritual world like i know you have been reading very nice books manasi ganga mati ji it's not that the uh, spiritual world is void of emotions mm no all those things exist in the spiritual world but they're more complete and absolutely pure and transcendent in the spiritual world and what we experience in the material world is a perverted reflection of the real emotions mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. and transformations that happen in the spiritual world okay again proper is explaining in the same lecture he is saying just to make us fit to understand krishna krishna is describing himself what he is ajo api asan avyatma bhutanam ishvaro api ishvaro api san prakritim swam adishya he comes with his own energy he is not forced by the external energy we are forced prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashah we as we develop different modes of nature by the association of this external energy we get our particular body karmana daiva netrena jantur dhyopati but krishna does not do so we have to first of all understand that krishna is not forced by karma we are forced by karma therefore we have got different bodies but krishna is not therefore he appears in different incarnations keshava dhrita meena sharira keshava dhrita kurma sharira keshava dhrita varaha sharira narasimha sharira so krishna when he comes as a born incarnation he is not an ordinary hog and pig these things are to be understood he is the bhutanam ishvara in whatever form he likes to come that is his pleasure atma mayaya he comes in his atma mayaya not by the force of the external energy that is the conclusion so this mm-hmm. is I'm, i read the whole thing from proper lectures that's nice yeah, that explains the the difference I understand it a bit more now. Thank you. So the the symptoms are 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 showing, but what is causing the symptoms in a jiva as opposed to the Lord differ in that the the internal energy is what's pushing on these. um these symptoms um for the lord and the external energy is what pushes on these um symptoms the normal jiva thank you yes, oh my ma'am. gosh thank yeah thank you so much this class is just what i needed to hear master ji yeah so many nice things thank you oh. Thank you, Manasik Anga Mataji. I sent you the lecture already. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I'll send it to everyone else. Anybody else would like to say anything, Ruchi Mataji? 
Mm-hmm. If you are quiet, the class is dull. Uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> you explained it pretty well today, so I don't think there is any room for doubt. Uh, Mataji, I I have one query. Uh, like you said, um, uh, uh, Krishna's mind and body and soul, it's all one. Uh, but mm-hmm. ours, it's different. Our soul and body, it's all all together very different. So it is about uh, material body. So uh, is it same for us in uh, uh, for those souls who are in um, uh, who are in spiritual world for them? Uh, also it is different or uh, in spiritual world everyone mm-hmm. has same mind body and soul or only it is only for krishna uh, Ma- mataji i have to read somewhere else uh, you know to answer this question i had the same questions as manasi ganga mataji asked because we see krishna growing up uh, my um, from my understanding in the spiritual world um i have heard both ways that the spirit soul um has its own uh, spiritual body so in that sense we have no difference between the uh spiritual mind spiritual body and everything okay. like krishna yeah okay okay mata ji but i will i will uh find out again because i have heard devotees speak both ways they say when we go to the spiritual world we acquire a spiritual body that means we are taking yeah. on an a new kind of body okay yeah. they speak like that but at the mm-hmm. same time uh uh they also say that uh, when we go to the spiritual world actually the soul already has its own senses and mind and intelligence yeah i have heard that all uh, souls already have their spiritual body uh, when they go there they attain that i don't know Ma- mata ji your voice was broken so i could not fully capture your sentence can you say it one more time please uh, i said mata ji i heard heard something like uh, everyone has spiritual body already there so when we go back there so we attain that body hmm um <sighs> yes master ji in the little reading that i've done i'm i'm hearing that the spiritual body is being developed um through our desires as, as we go along and when we quit this body and if we're destined to go back um that 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 body has already been developed and formed throughout um and then um and it's all and it's because like our our material body the subtle body has um has dissolved and the when that subtle body dissolves and the, and the spiritual body um has fully developed um through one's desires and one's mm, you know devotional service that you know one is going to go away the material body and the subtle body and when one goes to the spiritual world one will have that that body um it's like well, the the two things part that at least that's my little understanding of what my friend can you repeat this one more time can you repeat it once again please um well I'll, it would be better if i if i send you maybe some um maybe i'll type up some text but that as one is um, through one's desires and devotional service in one's life you know one's life here in the earthly planet one is developing their spiritual body that um that over time our spiritual body is being developed 
through our desires. And what's happening is our subtle body that surrounds our the spirit soul is um, is being dissolved. You know, so it's like an inverse relationship. You know, as our spiritual body continues to develop, our subtle body, you know, with our mind, intelligence, our false ego, that is all dissolving. And then when one goes in, when one quits this body, if one is at that point where they're going to end up in the spiritual world, um, then, um, you know, the, one leaves behind not only the, the, the material body, but the subtle body, and one has that spiritual body um, because it is being developed. It's not like, but we just don't have that realization, you know, as it's happening. But it's it's like a gradual happening that's going on, at least my understanding. But I'll have to I'll have to find something, and maybe I'll read next week or something. Um, if I find something yes, concise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll write a note. Yeah. And I just so wanted to say one more thing. So when you yes. were talking about Sita and Ram, uh-huh. how um, the that Sita could not be touched. By I Ramana. would also think, yeah, by Ravana. I would also think that um, in the Krishna Radha um, pastimes, Radha probably, even though she is married, um, her, would it be correct to say that you know, I know that it's, I, I read in past times that when she leaves in, let's say, in the middle of the night for the Rasa dance, the, uh, another body, like a Maya body, is, um, is left there in the house. Um, but I, I'm also wondering if, you know, you know, because of that, that capacity of, or whatever, that, that another body you know, is left in the house. So she's also not really being touched by her husband, you know, by law, you know, as opposed to Krishna being her real husband. Um, so would would you say that too? Madhuri, I do not know about the details that you have given, but I have heard in lectures that Abhimanyu was um, none other than the shadow of Krishna. Abhimanyu is the husband of Srimadhi Radharani in her past time. Right. Mm-hmm. And he is the shadow of Krishna. But even the between the the relationship between the shadow of Krishna and Srimadhi Radharani was such that it it is said that Abhimanyu not only never touched, touched her. he never mm-hmm. touched Radharani, he never even touched the shadow oh. of Radharani. He couldn't even come that close. Okay. So I've heard this. Yeah. I don't know like where it is written, but I have uh-huh. heard from uh-huh. authoritative sources, so I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I just thought, you know, I if I was just trying to extend that thought when you were talking about Sita. You know, if it if that was the same case. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> yes, Matri, thank you all very much for your participation. Ruchi Mataji, Manasi Ganga Mataji, Rishali Mataji, Linda Mataji, Shanti Mataji, and I don't know who else joined, but thank you everyone. Thank you. And we'll, thank we'll you. end here. Yeah. Um, there will be a class this evening, 6.30, that will be um, streamed live on YouTube. If possible, please hear the class. Every day, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday, of course, the class starts from 5.30. But on Friday and Saturday in the evening, there will be a class from 6.30 onwards. And in the morning, there will be a class from 7.30. I think I sent out an email to everybody. And I hope Linda Mataji is also on that email list. Are you on the email list? Uh, Linda um, Mataji, the timings? Um, I don't I know. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, what would be your email, Linda Mataji? Um, it's Linda Linda Mano 
at gmail.com. It's my first and last name, L-L-I-N-D-A. The last name is spelled M-A-N-O-W. At gmail.com. Give me one second so I can forward you. I'm sorry, okay. L-I-N-D-A dot M-A gmail gmail gmail.com. Give me your last name once again. Sure. It's Mano, M-A-N-O-W. Okay. Just in case, Mataji, maybe you can send me a text message. Okay? Okay. Okay. I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, those who are in Chicago, hopefully I'll see you at the temple. And then we all meet next week again for reading. Thank you. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. 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 Jai.